Sustainability is important because we don't have chances to come back and change things later. If we destroy the topsoil on the farm and lose it, then we get no more. If we lose our water through poor watering practices, Mother Nature may or may not give us what we need to keep the year going. Well, sustainability is important in the idea that if you're going to be sustainable, your business is going to be perpetual, that you're going to still be in business a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. For me personally, it's important for my family, my child, and for the future of our company. There are resources that are dwindling in supply and there's only a certain amount of green space that we have on our planet for us and our children. Besides considering the next generation and the future of our Earth, sustainability just makes good dollars and cents. Everything that we do that's sustainable actually helps save the nursery money and in, in a sense makes us money. By recycling, reusing, repurposing, we get longer life out of everything. We don't have to buy new equipment. We don't have to buy new pots. And I think it gives us a little edge in the marketplace. Why I think sustainability is important in this nursery is we have to survive. I mean, most of our sustainability thing, when we stepped back and looked at it, when, quote, being you know sustainable became a trend and, and something you wanted to, to do and maybe promote, we were doing, already doing a lot of that. We catch all of our runoff. We're using treated effluent water from the city of Gretna, which we get, and we needed that water to grow. We needed to catch our water to grow. Um, we've always reused pots. That just makes financial sense. Uh, we entered into uh, recycling and uh, constructed wetlands primarily because some 20 years ago, we realized that we needed to change our approach to the use of, uh, of that on the nursery. Water for many years was looked at as a resource that was uh, a never-ending resource that uh, we had no problems with sustainability. Uh, in recent years, I think we've all begun to realize that that's not true. Any efforts that we can do to, to reduce the amount of resources that we're using is gonna improve the bottom line for any business, in particular in our business. And as we, as we begin to look at things like how much water we're using in production, what, what kind of nutrient loads are we using? If we can reduce that and scale that back, not only does it increase our, our efforts at sustainability, it, it increases our profitability, which in turn makes the businesses more sustainable, which is the whole name of the game. For one thing, we try to be as profitable as possible, and to do that, you have to be able to use your resources well. And one way to do that we have found is to monitor and keep track of everything. We have calculators for everything, so we know how much is in each uh, plant. We keep track of our water usage. That sort of stuff's important because, you know, say one day they do want to regulate water and they want to know how much you're using. Well, if we've been tracking it for 10 years, we know how much we've been using. We can compare to other things and say, hey, we use a lot less than the car wash down the road or whatever, you know. Um, but that's very important. It also helps your bottom line. If you can save money throughout the whole year, then maybe in the wintertime you don't have to lay off a few extra people. You can keep them on because you've saved some money. Um, but sustainability is huge for us. The business practices we use to sustain our profitability are focused mainly around labor and energy efficiency. We use ebb and flood irrigation in our largest growing range. And that single addition alone of technology reduces our labor costs by about 66% in that area. We have one person managing a million to one and a half million plants. The older, less efficient areas that we operate, we would employ probably three people to do the same amount of work. Ebb and flood gives us completely uniform irrigation and, and reduces our overall shrink, which is really nice. Energy efficiency in terms of heating costs, we use energy retention curtains in our largest growing area. We use aluminum shade cloth on the rest of the growing area. It reduces our energy costs by 30 to 50% in those, in those respective areas. There's a lot of good stories to tell about the good things we do, be they uh, down the street from where we are now at a nursery or down in South Florida or wherever you are in this state or really the country. Uh, nursery growers are, are farmers and they watch their pennies and they manage the land and they manage their business to make a profit and because they love what they're doing. Nowadays it's very important to be able to tell your customers 
that you follow sustainable practices. If you're selling to a retail nursery and you have a product that has a time-release fertilizer, or if you're using new peat instead of taking peat out of the ground, these are points that they can then turn around and use in their advertising to promote their product as being more green. The main advice that I might give is uh, it's hard to, to make the decision to, to take the first step uh, and accept that your old ways of doing things need to change. But once we made that step here, we realized that the paybacks were quite numerous. And then we began to realize that we could recover some of the investments that we were making in ways that we had not anticipated. But accepting that new change and new approach to, uh, to what you're doing, I think is the hardest uh, step of all for, for uh, growers to take. To find additional information, please refer to this document and others which are available on the project website.